Okay, guys, um, I was just going to um, let you know that Morgan will be back after me. He's just um, cheating this time and not staying 24 hours. Um, he went for dinner. Um, our next presenter is Daryl Martin, and um, he's practically a pro. He's presented with the Trading Pub um, a lot, and um, I know that um, he has done a lot with Nadex. Um, so hopefully you guys will learn a lot and enjoy his presentation. So take it away, Daryl. All right, uh, thank you very much. Can everybody hear me okay? Am I coming through? So make sure I got the audio there before I get started. Awesome. Okay, well, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight on the event is actually how to trade um, range-bound or breakout markets. And I'm going to focus on the unemployment NFP report, so I figure it's sort of timely with that coming up tomorrow morning. And that can be a pretty difficult time to trade unless there's a certain way that you trade it. So we're going to talk about what that certain way is, how to be able to take advantage of it. Now, um, if you want to get more information, you can check out apexinvesting.com forward slash pub, and it'll take you there. There's the standard disclosures. You know, you can read through those. Basically, trading involves risk. Whatever you do, it's your decision, not ours, and, um, you know, all that fun stuff. And the unique information presented by Apex. Uh, one of the things is the instrument we're talking about today, capped risk. You cannot lose more than what you put up. So it's not like a, and I love trading futures and forex and all that, but it's not like futures and forex where you could actually get a margin call. The market could move inversely against you, it could blow past your stop, and you can end up losing more than what you expect. And you can't ever increase your risk while you're in the trade. So you couldn't like, you know, sort of cheat as a trader. We've all been guilty of that, moving our stops. You can't cheat. You can't get your risk greater than what it is when you go in. And uh, so that's a pretty cool benefit. Um, again, check out apexinvesting.com forward slash pub. We have a Free membership, I probably have three, four hundred hours of um, free education on there. Stocks, futures, forks, binary spreads, options. I do a radio show every day. I do, every day I do webinars every week on Thursdays that are free. I do um, webinars every Monday night that are uh, free as well. So we're going to go into Nadex. Uh, a quick background. Okay, a quick background on Nadex. I know a lot of y'all are from all over the world um, here at, you know, on the Trading Pub. Um, Nadex right now, and this should change literally within the next 60 days, uh, but right now is only available to U.S. residents. You can get a demo account, but um, you can't open a live account yet. But in about 60 days you can because they're bringing on um, future commission merchants, which should then allow them to open up the market to everyone in the world. So I just want to let you know that up front, but this is still valuable for you even if you can't do it immediately. One, you can demo trade it. You can learn it while you're waiting on it to come out. And two, when it does come out, then you'll have this, and you can use this on every time the ADP and FP report comes out or other reports that come out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this, you know, um, what is Nadex itself? Nadex is an exchange. It's in Chicago. It's regulated by the CFTC, just like the CME. And um, I trade on Nadex every day. And, again, it allows you to have, they have two types of contracts. They have binaries and spreads. Both have completely capped risk on them. And uh, they're not, if you've heard the word binary, that can sort of be a curse word <laughs> in the trading world. Uh, but it's not like bucket shop binaries. So one thing I want you to understand up front, sort of like all stocks are not the same, pink sheet stocks versus, you know, actual, you know, true blue chip stocks, totally different world. So they're completely different. The way they're structured is different. Their payouts are different. The payouts are much higher. In a lot of cases, you can do premium collection. You can do a lot of different things. You can do strangles and straddles, things that you normally uh, just can't do in the market's intraday or daily. And so you could actually straddle the S&P 500, you could straddle the Euro dollar, like right whenever the announcement comes out tomorrow. And so before I get into, you know, the actual strategy, let me just go over some of the stats. I put up a news plan inside of our website. Um, it's free for you to get access to quick news. Once you log in at apexinvesting.com forward slash pub, sign up, log in, go to news trading plan. And on the news trading plan, I go in and I actually pull all the stats on the forks pairs and how far they move on a given news report. So, for example, tomorrow on the report, I go in and I tell you, right, this is when the report's coming out, here's what the expectations are, you know, all that fun stuff. But the big piece, the most important piece, is right here. And let me see, I'm trying to zoom in so you can actually see, because I can tell on the screen it's hard to read that, it is right here. What is the actual expected move? And the expected move on the euro dollar, 100% of the time over the last two years, it's moved at least 50 pips 
when the ADP and unemployment, or not the ADP, but the NFP and unemployment report have come out. So both of those have moved, like 100% of the time they moved at least 50 pips. On average, they move 100, which means some move 50, some move 60, some move 70, some move 150, okay? The dollar franc, 88% of the time, as well as the pound dollar and uh, pound yen, 80% of the time they move at least 50 pips, high to low, after that report comes out. And again, also 100 pips high to low average range after it comes out. Aussie dollar starts dropping down a little bit, 83% move 50 pips um, with a 60 pip range. Dollar yen, you really start getting down in the lower numbers, probably not the best pair. 67% of the time it moves 50 pips with an 80 pip high to low. It has a bigger move, but more often than not, it actually doesn't break that. So I focus on you know these pairs right here. All right, these are the main pairs that I look at when I'm in a trade. And it's really cool when you trade these because you know what to trade. You know, you're always trying to figure out one of the things you trade is like, what market should I trade? You know what time to trade because it's when the report comes out. And you don't have to sit there for four hours or eight hours or 10 hours trading all day. You hop in, make your trade, done. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going for a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio. Now, honestly, on a lot of these, you can get two to one, three to one, you know, maybe higher. But I'm literally just going for base hits and doing these, you know, time after time after time. Now, I may watch some of them. Um, on the last one, I must admit, I cheated a little bit on the dollar franc, and I, I rode the thing up, and I ended up made like 300% on that one trade. On um, my euro dollar and pound dollar one, I have the one-to-one. -one. But, you know, most of the time, I'm going for one-to-one -one on this report, okay? Which means if I'm risking 50 bucks, I want to make 50. If I'm risking 500, I want to make $500. And the beauty about what we're going to do is you don't care what direction it goes. You know, you may have heard in trading, like, don't trade into a number. You know, tighten your stops, get out of your positions, you know, whatever, because you're going to get, you could get hammered easily. You could fly down 30 pips and up 70, and maybe we're long, but you got kicked out. I mean, all these other issues that come in. With this, we don't care what direction it goes. We just care that it's going to go. And this is... You know, one of the biggest reports that comes out, actually it's the biggest report that consistently has huge moves. So again, we don't care what direction it goes. You don't have to be, you know, you don't need any fancy software or anything. It doesn't matter. It just, boom, right there. Now, if you understand that, I don't care what direction it goes, but I understand how far it moves, that I want to make sure that my reward, okay, my take profit is sufficient to cover my risk. Right? So... Because if it costs me 80 bucks to do the trade, and I only let's say that means it has to move 160 pips for me to make money, well, I only expect it to move 100, so I'm not going to make anything. So it's not a good trade for me. So we want to make sure we know what our expected move is, and whatever my risk is, am I able to make that one-to-one -one before that expected move? Huge key. Okay, so how do we do that? Well. What I do is um, I built a scanner. It's free. You can access it right inside of our website. It pulls all the information directly out of the Natix Exchange live, and it does all the hard math for you. And I'll walk through these products and what they are. The first thing I go through is spreads. Spreads are usually my instrument of choice when I'm trading um, on Natix. So binaries are okay. I like spreads a lot. And, again, the spread scanner is feeding in tons and tons of contracts for you. Uh, and you don't have to click around everywhere to figure out, you know, which one is the best one, because there literally will be a lot of contracts sometimes, and uh, it can, and also the math isn't on the platform for you, so it can, it's, it's just a lot of mathematical work, and I don't want to spend half an hour figuring it out. By the time I figured it out, you know, the trade's over, okay? And uh, so I'm logging in over here to my Natix account. One second. There we go. And... So when you log into Nadex, and if you go to that link, you can get access to Nadex. Or it's, you know, um, we have the links on our website. This is what you're going to see. And so if you're wanting to trade, say, you know, the spreads. Again, we're not talking about the binaries at the moment. You go forks, bull spreads. Then you go euro dollar. And then you got to pick which expiration you want. Okay, so there's three contracts there, three there, you know, three there. There's another one there. There's ten contracts available right now that you have to sort through to try to figure out what trade you want to do. So sort of think about this like an option chain. If you ever traded options and there's all these calls and puts listed, and you can also sort them as verticals and everything else. And, you know, so like using a platform like Thinkorswim or whatever is really helpful because it lets you narrow stuff down. Well, the scanner basically does that for you as well, but even tighter. So I go in here and I go, okay, I 
I want to trade, you know, live or demo, whatever. And um, I just choose the one at the top and hit reset filters if you're, you know, you're new or if you're ever, you don't know what's going on. And then I can choose my market. So let's say I was going to trade the euro dollar or the pound dollar, you know, uh, and maybe the, uh, let's see here, we had one other one. So euro dollar, pound dollar, uh, these would be in their, their top two picks out of all of them. The one other pick, let's see, there it is, I got it over here, is going to be dollar franc. Okay? So those are my three top choices out of all the instruments. So now instead of having to go over here and click on the next platform between four different expiration times on three different markets, meaning a minimum of 12 clicks and remembering everything as I'm going back and forth, I'm going to be able to see all of the time listed right here. So now that feels really overwhelming when you first see it. Okay, so we're going to narrow it down. Like, well, I want, remember, I want a one to one. That's my minimum requirement, right? So I'm going to put one to one as my minimum risk reward ratio. And then to narrow it down, I'm going to say a hundred bucks, no more than a hundred dollars risk on either side. Now I do that. Now I'm starting to see that there's a lot fewer choices showing up on the screen. Okay. And when I do this, now I go, you know what? I need to make sure it expires after. This will be a big key if you're going to do this. Okay. Make sure the contract expires after the report comes out. So if you hop on at 7, you know, don't choose an 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. expiration because the report didn't come out until 8.30. And so I can actually go up here and say, well, how many minutes do I want until expiration? So I can say I want, you know, 60 minutes. You may say zero. I mean, if you hop on at 8 o'clock, just leave that at zero. But notice that drops all the 8 p.m.s off at the moment as if I was, you know, the, the report was about to come out. And it just shows me the 9 o'clock trades. And what you're looking at um, is a few things right here. And I want to explain this to you so that way you understand how to use this for picking the spreads. Is if we have the pound dollar up here at the top, so we know what that's what instrument we have. And then there's a little thing right there that tells you the market is open. It'll be red if it's closed. So if you're like, why is nothing showing up? Well, the market may be closed, like on Saturday. <laughs> um, right here is your profit and loss. So what's the most you could make? Okay, and right here is if the market goes up, how much could you make? If it goes down, how much could you make? And then the other thing it's doing is it's actually telling you what's, what's the equalization rate. Like if I was actually trading just this uh, for pound dollar instead of trading the pound dollar, well, one Nadex contract, every Nadex spread, this is huge. If you get this down, this helps out a lot, especially if you have any familiarity with trading other products. Every Nadex spread has a tick value. Let's zoom in some. Every Nadex spread has a tick value of a dollar. And they all take in increments of one, whether it be 0.0001 or 0.1 or 1 or whatever. They all have a tick value of one. So you notice, you know, pound dollar takes in 0.0001 or pip, whatever. Well, a pound mini lot, if you were to go trade at Forex Spot, also takes in ones and has a value of one. So buying a pound dollar on Nadex is like buying a pound dollar on Forex. As far as a tick, for, like if a one tick move in the spread would equal what a one tick move in the underlying would equal. Well, now we go, okay, well, that's what that means. That makes sense. This even tells me what the equivalency is. One pound mini lot to one Nadex spread. Um, you also can see, you know, that be take four um, pound dollar futures to equal 25 Nadex spreads if you want to equalize them because of the weird ratio of a quote in 62,500 units on the CME. And um, the reason I give you this as a side note is maybe you just want to trade futures or forks, but you'd like to hedge your trade. So you want to go in and put this on and so that way, you know, you go in and you buy the pound dollar and you can hedge it if it goes down. This spread will make money while your pound dollar is losing money. And so you could get yourself basically a 150-point stop loss for about 12 bucks. So it's a pretty sweet way to trade. Hedging is my favorite strategy. You can do it all day, every day. But right now, just focusing on news. So on the news, what do I want to do? Remember, I don't care if it goes up or down. I just care that it moves. And so I'm going to look at a few things. And uh, first thing is I want to get one that's going to be close to where the market is. You can see that blue one right here. If we click on the blue one, there's a difference in price on the shading. That's the live price of the pound dollar. Okay, we can't display the live prices of everything, but we can at least show you the representation. So it's the live price of the pound dollar. If I want to do a straddle, that means I want to make money if it goes up or goes down. I want this thing to stop losing as quickly as possible. So that is not going to work for me. So I have a couple other choices. I could choose this spread, and this is a pretty cool feature. You'll see this tomorrow. I made a lot more money on the last NFP because of the scanner, and I actually did it for my phone. So I was, actually, I was with my daughter at her school, and we stopped for five minutes, and I placed my trades, and I went back and you know, focused on what was going on there. 
Uh, so you can use this on like you know if you have an iPhone or Android or whatever smartphone, you can also use the scanner. But right there, uh, I'm looking at these two are my potential buy contracts. This one is going to expire in 106 minutes at 9 o'clock. This one's going to expire in 226 minutes at 11. Okay? So it's important for me to understand that because what I want to do is go over here and look. I have an $8 risk on this and an $11 risk on this. So for getting myself basically for two more hours to allow the market to move, I'm going to only pay another 3 bucks. So if I was picking this trade, and if I said this happened on the last NFP, I'm going to pick the 11 o'clock. I can make more money if I was holding on to it longer. Probably get out of it before then anyway. But I can make more money. And I have more time. Because what happens if it, move, it doesn't move far enough by 9 o'clock, but you know, by 10, 10, 30, the thing's really taken off? Well, I don't miss out on that, and I really only took on a couple more dollars risk. I have the exact same thing going on on the sell side. I got that smaller one. I got that bigger one. And look, only a few more dollars, and I'm able to put that trade on. So this tells me real quick, for a few more bucks, basically five, six more bucks combined risk, that's my best straddle on the pound dollar. Now let's pretend, I tell you right now, they're going to cost more than like 12 or 16 bucks in the morning. But let me pull up a chart for the pound dollar, and let's act as if it's 8 a.m., okay? And we're waiting on the report to come out. And how do we decide if we're going to, you know, place this trade? Like, is this a good straddle for us or not? And so we'll go right over here, and I'm going to bring this down. Let me get rid of RSI. Let me get rid of volume. Okay. All right. So now what we got to do is we got to figure out is this going to be a good trade? Now let, this is where I get to actually teach you what are these spreads? Like what are the, what are they? How do they work? I call them box spreads because they look like a box if you draw them on a chart. So we're actually going to draw the spreads on the chart and grab this little rectangle right here. And um, i got to look at the spread. So if this buy has a floor, 64.80 to 67.80. So let's just draw that. Okay, so right here, 64.80. And we're going to have to make it a lot bigger. I'll shrink it way down. I'm thinking go huge. So right there, I'll make it, then we'll zoom back in in a second. So 64.80. This can make money all the way up to 67.80. Now, if it goes higher than 67.80, I make max profit. Okay, so it doesn't have to expire like inside this range. If it goes above it, I'll make maximum profit. Okay, so first let me draw that. I'll walk through it step by step with you. And by the end of this, you'll understand what a spread is, how it works, and how to trade it. And then over here, we'll draw the um, lower box. We got a 64.80 down to 61.80. Okay, so you know, sort of getting approximate here. Oh, and then we need to bring it out to eleven o'clock. Remember, because we have till eleven until it expires. So right there. All right, and we'll grab this one. We're going to grab it, drag it out right here, and then let's change the color of that one to see so you understand that that's a buy. Get some sort of green here. There we go. Okay, so here's my my two boxes. I can make money if it goes up. I can make money if it goes down. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean you're always going to make money, regardless of which one it does. Okay, so, you know, how does that work? We have to figure out what our risk is. The risk is really simple. One, the scanner will tell you what the risk is, but how, how did I come up with that? Um, and the scanner also includes exchange fees. Okay, so when I say max, like, when I put the max risk, I'm including the fees. Uh, you know, because you, you have exchange fees where you trade on CME, where you trade on you know, New York Stock Exchange, whatever you have fees. So I'm including all the fees in there. And um, if you want to know what the fees are, it's pretty simple. They're 90 cents a contract, okay, up to $9 an order. So if I do 100 contracts, it's 9 bucks. If I do 10 contracts, it's 9 bucks. If I do 5 contracts, it's 4 50 90 cents times that, whatever my order per order is, up to 9 bucks. And there's it's the same fee on the exit. If it expires out of the money, meaning like worthless, then which is not a bad thing. Okay, you'll find out here in a second uh, because that means one side made money then there's no fee on that side. All right, so we got this big box here, and we got a floor, remember, of 64.80 over here, okay? So if I buy something at 64.92, we'll bring up a uh, simple calculator. I buy this at 1.64, you know, 9.1 is where it's at right now. 
And the most I can lose on the buy is down to the floor. Okay, so 64.91 minus 1.6480. So the most I can lose is 11 ticks. And, you know, it's fluctuating a little bit, so we'll have to deal with that. But basically $11. Uh, right now it's at 64.92, so it's $12. Does everybody understand that the risk on the spread is going to be the difference between where I buy the spread and the floor of the spread? So I'm not worried about the reward because remember we're kind of on a hundred dollar move. So I'm not like I'm not really worried about it. So 64.91 minus 64.80. So if I went in here and I bought this contract. At 64.91, right here. The worst thing that can happen on this buy is I lose 11 ticks. Okay? Because if it goes down, the cool thing is I'm still in the spread. It could go down 30 ticks and go back up, and I could still make money. How much could you make? Well, for every tick higher that you get out, just like if you're like if you bought you know euro dollar pound dollar. If I buy a pound dollar and I sell it five ticks higher, I make five ticks, five pips. If I sell 20 ticks higher, I make 20 ticks. If I sell, you know, if I buy it and I sell it 10 ticks lower, I lose 10 ticks. Thing is, on this, I can't lose more than 11. So it could move 40 ticks against me and I still only lose 11 ticks, no matter what. Okay, so that's, and this is just, and people go, well, how is that possible? How could you only risk 11 to make 287? This happens every single day. Every day. Options are sold and bought. People buy calls that have limited risk and uncapped, you know, uncapped profit. People buy puts that are, you know, have limited risk and you no know, uncapped or capped profit if they do a vertical. Same thing, but the benefit here is you don't have options that are expiring a week from now or a month from now or a year from now, and you're paying for all that time decay, all that theta, if you know what that means, and the option moves really slow because you have basically what's called your delta is really, really low. But if you're really close to expiration, if you've ever traded Friday expiration options, they're the cheapest to trade because they have the lowest amount of premium time decay in them and they move really fast. Same thing here, except for every single day, every single hour, there are new spreads coming out. Okay? So right here I go in, I got $11 risk on that one. And on this one down here, how much is my risk? Okay, so my risk on a sell is going to be the price I sell at up to the ceiling. So if I sold, this is my bid, this is my offer, okay? So bid, offer, right there, just make sure you can see that. And uh, so let me move this to always on top, that way we don't lose it. Okay, and uh, so when I'm doing that, that's literally how I'm going to find out exactly what the contract is, which one I want to trade, how I want to trade it, what my risk is, everything. So who can tell me what the risk would be on a sell if my risk was from 64.64 up to 64.80? If that's the most I could lose. See if anybody can grab the math, get a gold star, you know, that type thing. If not, I'll just move forward because I know a lot of this is new to you. And you actually don't even have to do the math. It's right on the screen. Okay, but it's including exchange fees on the screen. All right, so there we go. Exactly. Perfect. You know, I'd like to make it a little bit interactive. Otherwise, it could get really boring really quick. <laughs> um, all right, so if we go in here and we go, okay, if I'm selling at 1.6464 and my selling is 1.6480, my risk is $16. So I'm risking 16 bucks on the sold one. I'm risking 11 bucks on the bot one. So my total risk on the trade, remember every tick is worth $11, okay? My total risk on the trade is 11 plus 16. So again, we'll move it up here, we'll put 16 down here, we'll put 11 up here to make it simple. Okay, that's our risk. And then what we'll do is we'll throw in another one right in the middle that says what our total risk is. So our total risk is 27 bucks. So now that we know what our total risk is, how do I know if I'm going to make a one-to-one? -one? Remember I said I always want to be able to make a one-to-one -one on the trade. Well, what I do, and if you can write down this formula, it's really simple. My total risk plus my risk on the other side. Okay? So 
my total risk is twenty-seven dollars. So to make a one-to-one, -one, if it if the pound dollar flies up, okay, twenty-seven dollars plus sixteen. Because I what I would assume is that the sold one is going to lose everything. Because let's say if it goes up, it expires out of the money. I had max loss on that, so I need to account for that sixteen dollar loss. But I want to come out of this trade with another twenty-seven dollars in my account that I didn't originally have. So I'm going to lose sixteen on one, and to make a net twenty-seven on the other. So it's real simple, just add your total risk plus the risk on the other side, 43 pips. And then what about on the, you know, the short side? Okay, how many pips do I need to make to come out with a one-to-one? -one? It's going to take my total risk plus the risk on the long side. So I'm going to add in 11 pips right there, so 38 pips. So that's how many pips I would need to make on each side to make back my 27 bucks. Exactly, 38, perfect. So now what I need to do um, is be able to go, okay, well, what does that mean? Where do I set my take profit? Well, if I need to make 38 pips, if I sell at 34.64, I need to buy back 38 pips lower. So uh, we don't need all these old ones anymore. So let's go over here and go, okay, well, if I sell at 1.6464, I need to buy back 38 pips lower. I need to buy pips under the price that I sold this contract at, okay? If I make 38 pips, I don't want to make my $27, but I'll cover the $11 that this one lost. Now, when I say 11, that may be really small to you. You can do 10, you can do 50, you can do 100. I mean, you're a dollar, you can do a couple hundred, several hundred. So, I mean, you can make this number 110, 1,000, and 10, you know, whatever. So, what about the one I bought? Well, I need to make 43 pips. And I'm buying it at, you know, 16491. Uh, so, if we go... 1.6491, I need to add 43 pips, so 0 0.0043. Also, I'm doing is I'm just adding my risk, you know, plus my risk on the other side on top of it for my exit price, where I want to place my sell order. So this is where I want to get out of the trade. If it goes up, this is where I get out of the trade if it goes down. Now, how far of a move, so we got all that down, okay? These are the prices that I'd have to get to if I got filled at the current market prices to make one to one. How far would the market have to move is your next question. How far would it have to move for me to uh, make this? Like what's my expectation? Now I know how far I have to sell below or buy back, you know, sell back above or buy back below the market. But where's the market at right now? Right now the market's at 6474. So if I go 1.6474 minus 1.6426, the market would have to move 48 pips between now and 11 o'clock for me to make a one-to-one -one return on my trade, okay? If I go up here and I go, well, the market's at 1.6474 and uh, 1.6534 is where I have to sell out at. The market's at 1.6474. That market have to move up 60 pips, so sort of losing a, a zero there. And the quote would have to move up 60 pips for me to make a one-to-one. -one. Not to make a profit, but just to make a one-to-one. -one. Okay? And so, remember, to make a, uh, to be break-even on the trade over here, now that I have it marked, it's always on top. Um, to be a break-even, I basically just need to be able to get out of that contract. So, if I sold at 1.6464, right there. If the market expires... At 11 o'clock at 1.6464, they're going to give me back the 13 bucks I put up. So I'll be break even on the short side. I would have lost 11 on the long side. If it expires 11 pips lower, remember I risked $11 on the upper side, and it expired 11 pips lower than where I sold it, I'd be break even on the entire trade. So it's not that hard to be break even on. Think about NFP, moving 50 pips, et cetera. Okay? So what I want to do over here now, and I'm going to take off the always on top so I can put the that behind there. What I want to do on the NFP is I want to go, is that realistic? So I'm saying it has to move up 60 and down 48. Well, what's my expected range on pound dollar? Okay. Now this range is high to low. It could move up, you know, 104 pips. It could move down 104 pips. It could move down 40 and up 60. It could move down 30 and up 70. Okay. I'm usually expecting it to move a majority of the amount in one direction. Every once in a while you'll get the oscillation, but, you know, so 
let's say 80% of that move, I expect to be in one direction, whenever it's NFP. So maybe I'm expecting about 80 pips or so on the trade. Is that expectation of 80 or if you just said 100 pips, so if we go for the 100, is that less than the 48 pip move required for me to get one to one? Yeah, I mean, 48 pips is less than, like the pound dollar Atlanta move up 48 pips for me to get one to one. What about, uh, or down, sorry, 48 pips. If the market moved up 60 pips, that's still less than the 100 point expectation. And so if it moved that far, then I could get the one to one. What I don't want to do is have a scenario where it would have to move 140 pips. Like let's say my total risk on the trade was $70 and the thing had to move, you know, 140 pips or whatever to be one to one. I only expect it to move 100, so that's not a great trade for me. Okay, so I want it to be with. I want my take profit goal to be within the realm of reality of how far I should expect this to move based on how far it has moved. And then what I'll do to do the trade is I'll simply go over here. I'll buy this contract, and we built in the scanner where you can do it. And I'm going to do it on demo because this is an NFP, and I don't want to throw my money out the window. But uh, so right here, I'll choose demo, so it'll throw my demo account. And I'm going to buy this contract. It'll open the ticket for me. It'll populate. Once that populates up, then I can hit, you know, place order. I can do one. I can do 10, whatever. So let's say I'm going to do 10. I just change the quantity right there. Zoom in on that for you so you can see the ticket a little better. Okay, so right there, I'm buying this contract, 10 of them for the price of $64.91. And they'll be, you know, more liquidity in the morning. So this is just nighttime. And then hit place order. I took the 10 out. They're going to put 10 more back here in, you know, a minute or two. Anyway, so I went ahead and put that one in. Got that one done. Now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to sell this 11 p.m. Okay, I'm going to sell 10 of these. This would be like buying a lot and selling, like buying a lot of pound dollar, 100,000 units, and selling a lot of pound dollar, 100,000 units. I'm going to sell that one at the current market price there. Which we know what the risk is, 64.65 up to 64.80. And uh, so I hit place order on that one. Now, as soon as I get in, just like any trade, I'm going to be down my bid ask spread. Okay? And so I'm in this trade right now. This one actually didn't get filled yet, so I want to double check it because the market may have moved like a couple ticks. So it shows me up here how many I'm in, what's the working quantity. Yeah, I moved down by a tick. So I can wait on the oscillation. Or if I'm like, you know, I don't really care about the tick. I want to get both sides because I don't know what way this thing is going. I can just click on the current bid price and hit amend order. And then what it'll do is it'll submit my order for me. And it'll basically, it logs back and forth as it's communicating. There it goes. Now we're in. Now that I'm in the trade, remember, I already determined what price I want to get out at. So when I buy, I'm going to sell up at 65.34. So I'm going to click on this ticket. It's going to open a ticket for me in the opposite direction. And then now I just need to update my sell price. So now my working order is already going to be going for me. So I got 1.6534. Make sure it's right before I submit it. 1.6534. And hit place order. Okay, so now I'm going to have a working ticket to sell out of these contracts when the market goes up to 65.34. On the sold ones, I figured out I need to buy them back at 64.26. So I'm going to go over my sold contracts. I'm going to click buy it back. And so if I want to buy it back at 64.26, I'm just going to change this right here to 64.26. And then hit place order. So now it's going to buy them back when the market goes to, if the market goes to, 64.26. And literally my trade's done. Okay, that's, that's it. I walk away. You know, now I can stay there. Is there wisdom in staying there? Yeah, you might decide that you only want to do five of them. I got one-to-one, -one, and the other ones you want to sort of trail if you feel comfortable enough with your confidence to watch charts and trends and continue, you know, how far it goes. Um, one thing I'll tell you is the spike number. We put, like, what's the initial spike? It spikes 50 pips. So expect this thing to go up, like, 50. It may pull back 20, and then it will head up, like, another 70 from there, ending up 100 pips. So... It's real easy to get nervous when it moves up 50 pips in the stalls and starts pulling back. We expect that spike. We expect a little bit of a pullback, and then we expect it to keep going. So just be aware of that. Um, another reason is maybe it comes out in the market, you know, an hour into it. And last time I got the 3 o'clocks for $3 more than the 10 a.m. expirations. I mean, so it was great. Uh, so I managed it a little bit more because it was so cheap. And uh, 
but even if the market's not moving, let's just say unemployment comes in as expected, um, NFP comes in as expected, market just sort of awesome, like pops up, you know, 20 ticks, pops down, 50 ticks. I mean, there'll be some movement no matter what, because again, the average move is 50 fifths. But you decide, you know, this isn't really worth it. I just want to hop out at break even. Remember, I risked originally $27, right? So all I got to do is make back that other side's risk. So if I risked $11 on one side, I just need to make back 11 pips. I don't have to go for, you know, like 38 pips that we were talking about before. Get 11, get out. That covers the loss on my short side. Close my break, you know, my, my other one out. Now, here's a trick question for you. Not really a trick, but a, a cool bonus. If you're at max loss and the market's flying down, okay, so you get in this trade right here, and the market's flying down, flying down, it hits your take profit down here at 64.26. Okay? I mean, this one up here that you bought for 13 bucks or 15 bucks or whatever it's going to cost in the morning, it's going to be worthless. Is there any reason to close it? To close this bot one out? If there's basically no value in it, maybe a dollar or two, like, is there really any reason to close it out? Any benefit for you as a trader? Angelo, there you go. So no, go start Angelo there. So no benefit at all because actually there's a great benefit of leaving it on. There's only a couple bucks. Remember it costs 90 cents just to close the thing out for a fee. So leave it on and have you ever traded news before or at least watched the news and watched it fly down and then fly back up? Yeah, I mean we've all, I mean if you've watched FOMC, you know, NFP sometimes, things like that, it'll fly down, it'll fly back up. You may actually end up hitting your profit on both sides. So that would be like a reason you might want to stay there because if it flies back up, either you, you may want to go for that one-to-one -one, or maybe you're like, you know what, if I can just get my money back on the other side, then I, I increase my reward overall because I didn't lose anything on the long side. But I've had times where I'll go in the trades and I'll literally hit my take profit on one side and it's going so volatile, it'll fly back up the other direction and I'll make money on the other side as well. So I don't expect that to happen. That's why otherwise I'd be shooting for less than one-to-one -one on each side. But when it does happen, it's basically it's bonus. It's free money to you because it's money you weren't even planning on making as part of the trade. Um, that's a straddle, okay? Just going in, buying the market. So now some of you may, you know, we talked about binaries at the beginning. Other choices that you could do is you could do what's called a binary contract. And by the way, I wouldn't be doing these at night that often because the markets are not usually as volatile unless there's news justifying it. We do tell you what news events to check out, usually like Aussie dollar, dollar yen news announcements at night. But um, if you go to the binary scanner, you can do the same thing. And we, were just, we just looked at one pair. We didn't look at all three. But uh, let me go back. I want to show you that one piece again real quick. So not only did we have uh, the Wall Street, but... You could have scrolled down and looked at the, the pound, you could have looked at the dollar franc, and you could have looked at the euro dollar all with you know one page without clicking over and over and over and over again. Okay? Now in the binary scanner, okay, totally different instrument. Alright, so these are more like trading the underlying. I buy it, it moves up five ticks, you know, sell five ticks higher, cool. The market moves down five ticks, you know, buy back five ticks lower. Uh, they're like if you're used to trading at all. Those are going to be pretty simple and easy to you. Okay, there's a little bit to learn, but not that much. And we have all the free education on it in the website. Binaries, totally different animal. Okay, I mean like completely different animal. And these are completely different than your bucket shop over the counter binaries you may have heard of before, which most of them are being kicked out of the US right now. On a binary, the way things work is the if you go into make a statement, so let's go and let's pick, let's pick the pound dollar so we can see on the same uh, instrument, okay? On a binary contract, let's reset all of our filters. There we go. So these are all the contracts available today on the pound dollar. I mean, there are a lot of contracts, okay? So first of all, you can imagine trying to filter through all that could be a pain. And so I can go, you know what, I want to do, you know, a trade that's going to cost me less than, you know, I don't want anything to cost more than 25 bucks. And uh, I don't want it to expire within the next hour, okay? Like you don't want it expiring at 8 o'clock if you're hopping on at 7.30 to put the trade on. And uh, that's pretty much it. 
So you don't need to really do anything else because um, it's going to be Friday. So you can use dailies and weeklies. They have weekly contracts as well on the binaries. And then I look at some of these and I'm like, well, that's just too stupid cheap, like $3 or just way out there. And so to get rid of all this mess of these just useless binaries that are way, way, way out there, then um, I could actually put on here like four. Let's see if that'll get rid of them. Yeah, that'll drop them off. So like four gets rid of all those like $3 ones that were completely useless. Now, what is a binary contract? Okay, let me click a ticket to explain it to you. A binary contract on Nadex, okay, this is this is um, a different kind of binary than you know, what you may see somewhere else. A binary contract on Nadex is a true or false statement. This is the most basic explanation. Okay, we're going to go to the what it, what it is on Nadex, how it's different. But the most basic explanation is a binary contract is a true or false statement. If you buy, again, don't, don't stop here. We're going to keep going. But if you buy, you're saying the pound dollar will be greater than this price, like 1.650 at 11 o'clock. If you're correct, you pay 6 bucks, you make $94 on the contract. Now, I've narrowed this down for strangles. We can, well, there's a lot, as you saw, there's a lot of other contracts. You don't have to pick one this far away. But, um, so 1.650. If it's greater than 1.650, it will make $94 on this trade by 11 o'clock tonight, which is a massive return, okay, if it's greater than that. If I sell, and notice how it says, here's your risk, here's your reward, here's your reward risk ratio. So it does all the math for you, okay? If I sell, notice when I bought, like my risk was five bucks, when my, the quote is five dollars, so whatever my quote is on the buy side, that is my risk. On a sell, my quote on the bid side here, okay, that's my reward. $89. And the most I could lose is, is 11. Why can I only lose 11 and make 89? Every binary contract is only worth $100. Now you may do 100 contracts, you may do 5 contracts, you know, you do whatever you want. But a single contract, the maximum value is 100 bucks. Okay? So if I sell this contract for 89.50, I could make 89.50 if it expired. Now remember when I said if you bought a binary, you're saying the statement up here was true, the pound dollar would be greater than 64, you know, in this case 6500. At 11, well, if I sell, I'm doing the opposite. Okay, I'm saying the statement is false. I'm saying it will not be greater than 6460 at 11 o'clock. It'll be less than or equal to 6460 at 11 o'clock. If I'm correct, I'll make 89.50. If not, the most I'll lose is 10 bucks and 50 cents. Okay. Now, remember I said that was the most basic definition. You don't have to hold the contract till expiration. I could sell it at 89 50 and I could buy it back at 50 bucks. And so what we do is we do that same strategy we did earlier. And let's check this out. We have, let's see, these, uh, actually I can just use a scanner because I have the uh, trades right there. And so what we can do, let's go over here. Give me one second. All right, so uh, we said we were gonna buy back if it went down to 64.26. So actually, I can go down to this contract. I can do simulate a range. What if the pound dollar dropped down to 64.26? I go up here and I said I'm gonna buy back, or I'm gonna sell out of the trade because it's up to 65.34. So I can say, what if this goes to 1.6534? How much money would I make? On the trade. Basically, I'd be pretty much at max profit. That's a massive move. Um, and so I'd make $90 on the trade. On this one, I'd make or your $89.50. Okay? And notice 64.60 is a lot closer than 64.26. Right? 6,500 is a lot closer than 65.34. So what if we said, what if it just hits the strikes? What if it just got to 6,500? We think it's going to go to 65.34. But let's bring that in. And let's say, what if it just got to 6,500? So we're only at like 70 pit move. And instead of going to 64.26, what if it went to 6460? So we're like raising it up like 34 pips. It just came down and it hit that strike. How much would I make? Well, what this shows me, I'd make $36 on the sold one. Okay, there's my p and I'd make $38 on the bought one. Wow, okay, so that's pretty nice. Does that cover my uh, risk for a one-to-one? -one? Definitely. 
There we got $5 on one side, right here. Currently we have $13 on the other side. I have 18 bucks, and I need to make 18 plus the risk on the other side. So on the buy side, I need to make 18 plus 13. So I need to make at least $31. Well, this says I'd make 38. That's awesome, okay? Um, on the other side, I need to make 18 plus five, because I only have $5 risk on this side. I only need to make 23. Okay, well, that, it says I'd make $34. So if I want to make 23 to get one to one, that's great. And which, what that means for you is you don't necessarily have to even go, you don't even have to put your take profit in at 33. You can just put it in at how much money do you have to make to be profitable. So if on this contract on here, on the sell side, I only got to make 23 pips. And if on the buy side, I only have to make, let's see, what do we have again? We had uh, 16 plus 5. That's, the prices are changing a little bit. But uh, we'll say plus 16. That's a little higher. But 37 pips. Okay. Then if I went in, and I need to, again, do demo because I'm not expecting a massive move right now. Let's do demo. I have demo over on the spread scanner, but it's just switched over. And so if I clicked on this right here, buy this one for $5. So that pops up, you know, grab that one. I'll just get one of them this time. It goes over here. And I sell this one for $84.50. Okay. And then I'll go up here. And now I have my binary contracts open. And uh, now that one's fluctuating a little bit. See? So you always want to watch. There it goes. Okay, now it filled for me. Good. All right. So when I sold, I said I need to make $23 on it. So I'm going to click on that to put my close order in. And I may have to go in, you know, do the math if you want to. I use a calculator all the time. It's just not worth trying to do it in your head. $62 is what I need to buy it back at. Okay. And then the one that I sold, so that's when I sold. The one I bought, then I want to go in down here and um, have a buy at five. So if I bought it for five bucks, Okay, then uh, what do we say? We had to make 27 plus, I guess we got it filled at 15. So actually what we'll do is we'll say, well, we got filled out. 15 plus 5, so make 20 plus 15. So I need to make 35 pips. So it's that $35 to 5. It's pretty simple, 40 bucks. So I just need to sell it at 40. Right there. Put that in. And now what will happen is, if it gets to, you know, either one of these prices, if, if the sold one gets from 85 down to 62, I'm going to take profit. The bought one gets from 5 up to 40, I'm going to take profit. And that's going to happen faster than hitting my strike. It's going to happen faster than the spread hitting one to one. So if that's the case, if it doesn't have to move as far for me to make one to one, if I can, you know, put on for about the same risk as the spread, why would I choose the spreads over the binaries? Like what possible advantage would there be? Well, remember when I said on the spreads, you go in and, you know, like if it only expires down five ticks, you know, if you buy it right here and it goes down two ticks lower, it only was two ticks. So if you put in, say, $15 risk on this trade and expire two ticks lower than where you bought it, you're going to get 13 back. On the binary, if one of my take profits doesn't get hit, I'm going to lose the entire 18 bucks. It doesn't have to expire above there. Remember, like, that's one of the big things about Natix. It doesn't have to expire there. But... It does have to go in and um, hit my take profit. The spreads you'll are easier to get break even on, or small loss on, or a small profit on if it doesn't move as far as expected. The binaries can move a whole lot less and sometimes cost less, and you'll get that one to one really quick, so long as it does at least move that far. So there's you know there's a a balance there. Um, so I got a question from Graham. So one could hedge a five dollar buy and eleven dollar sell, total sixteen dollars outlay, to make a guaranteed um, approximate ninety dollars, but hits either direction. Um, I wouldn't say hits. Uh, I'd say expires. So um, if it hits, I mean you get out of the trade, right? So you can get out. This isn't like a touch, like a touch option or something like that. So if your risk, if your total risk was sixteen bucks, Graham, on the trade. The max value of a binary is $100, so you'd make 84 bucks, 
Okay, because you'd lose like on one side or the other. Okay, so the one that I bought for 11, I'd make 89 on, and then I'd lose five bucks on the other side, I'd make 84. The one that I bought for five bucks, I'd make 95 bucks on, I'd lose $11 on that side, so I'd make 84. So, but yeah, for $16, if it did expire above or below, and like I do a big Google trade, we got earnings seasons coming up, and some of my favorite trades to do, cleans up. I go and I use the NASDAQ to do this, okay? And uh, it's sweet, it's an awesome trade, one of my favorite trades. Anyways, uh, we go in, if you check out like my radio show archives on Google release dates, you can find, you know, like watching me do it. But uh, anyway, so right here we got, uh, yeah, but yeah, you can make 84 bucks if it expired above or below. Now, I don't teach and I don't recommend that you leave trades on till expiration because what if it goes all the way up to 64.80, but before 11 o'clock it comes back down to 64, you know, 59 or something, okay? Uh, or maybe, maybe I'm going the wrong direction there. But what if it goes up to 65, let's say it goes up to 65.20, but then it retraces down to 60, you know, 4.99, one tick below. Remember, it has to be one tick above or higher. You lose, you lose everything. You, you gave it all away. So I do want to take a profit. So, yeah, we're actually looking at a scanner for the binaries right now. So that's what this is. This is all the binary contracts on the Nadex exchange. And uh, it's sorting them out. It's actually pretty cool, like, especially at 3 o'clock tomorrow on Forex, because you'll have intradays that go from 1 to 3. You'll have dailies that go from, I guess it's going to be, you know, now to 3. Um, and then you're going to have weeklies that go from like Sunday at 6 all the way to Friday at 3. And so it'll take all three of those and put them on one page for you to narrow it down. And uh, you can do it. You can do all the risk reward. You can get as advanced with this as you want to. Or, you know, I have traders that come in. They're like, you know what, I just want to trade this and this. And, you know, they have, like we do a strategy called premium collection. We're, we're collecting premium all the time. And, uh um, They'll drop it down, and now it'll say, okay, well, here are the contracts that qualify for exactly what you're looking for. It narrows it down really quick. And you can even get rid of the hours. Like, let's say you don't want ones that expire at 3 o'clock, or you only want ones that expire the next, you know, let's see here, what time is it? So we'll say four hours. So it'll narrow it down for you. There's a 9 o'clock and the 11 o'clock expiration. Choose which one you like. But the whole idea here is to narrow down from hundreds and sometimes thousands of contracts down to just a couple. Okay, it's like we have ones expiring in the next 15 minutes. So you can go and see, are, are there any possible trades, you know, that meet your parameters? Okay, so this is a great question. Um, would you recommend the straddle, the box spreads on seal every day, even when there's no news at the open, since it moves so much daily? Okay, this is a really important thing to understand. Um, and it goes along with one other lesson, too. Uh, for you option traders out there, they're trying to figure out the binaries, and this will go into the straddle question. They're using a Black-Scholes model. Okay, so again, if you don't understand options, you don't have to understand what I'm about to talk about, but I just want to, you know, let you understand there is, a, like, a logic. People are like, where is the 60 and 95 and 4? And you know, I'm trying to, like, reset this and see everything. You know, where are these prices coming from? Somebody just randomly pulling this stuff out of their butt, or, you know, what, what, where is it coming from? Um, the price actually is representative of delta. So if you find the delta like on a CME uh, option right now, so if I went over to like say my thinkorswim account and let's see, I can actually show you this. And it's important that you understand this because otherwise you'll just try to straddle everything and you'll wonder why you're losing. And I'll pull up say the S&P and it has contracts that are expiring tomorrow, okay? And I'm going to go up here, and I'll pull up the S&P. And I'll say, I only want to see the ones that are expiring tomorrow at 4.15. Okay, so these expire at 4.15. The S&P options expire at 4.15. And I can look at the delta on these options, and they'll match a binary price. So I can go right down here, and uh, let's try to find one that's as close as possible on the strikes. Okay, so right here, this is a um, 18, 20, 3, 25, so somewhere around there, okay? And uh, so we got 18, 20, 18, 20 right there. Here's an 18, oh, here's an 18, 20 right there, perfect. Okay, so we got an 18, 20. Look at the cost. So we got an 82 delta. We have an $83 
binary. The delta and the binary quote are the exact same thing. Okay, so the delta, if you were choosing a call strike with the same expiration time, the delta would basically be the exact same thing. All you're doing is you're trading what's known as delta. But that's a whole big different topic. Uh, but the reason I go into that is understand that even on the spread, they're factoring in movement. Okay, so if you go in and go, you know what, I'm just going to trade. I mean, oil moves a lot every day. Okay, well, there's actually an expectation of movement built into every option. Um, one of the things that we have in here are called deviation levels. And they show you how far the market's expected to move every day. And this isn't using like standard deviation that's based on you know past volatility. Uh, it's using so if I go over here, we'll look at let's look at oil for instance. If I look at oil, it tells me you know what are, what are the expected movements on oil that's actually built into the option pricing of option markets. And we basically expect the market to move a deviation. And uh, so I can go in here and go indicators, and I'll go into it's right here. Okay, the orange line is a one deviation move. That's a high to low. Like that's actually like what the expectation is that day for oil to move. The blue line is the high to low. So it went up like half a deviation, went down half a deviation. That would equal one. And you can see over and over again, more days than not, it basically gets right to that deviation. Now it may not expire there. But that's the expectation of how far the market will move. And that's built into the option price. So if they go in and let's say your premium on oil, which right now I guarantee you would be high because you have until tomorrow, um, we can look at it. Your premium on oil, something I really, I, I usually don't trade the oil spreads at night. I'll trade them during the day. I usually don't trade them at night. And let's get rid of all our filters. Okay. Uh, your premium, which is basically this little number right here, if I get really close to the floor ceiling, so if I want to do a straddle, so if I want to, and we'll find the equivalent down here, the $97 the same ceiling, okay? That's still not even a great trade because it's already moved. Oh, there we go. That's my equivalent. All right, so there's a straddle right there. There is 36 ticks, which would be 36 cents, okay, a premium built into that buy side. That sell side also has 36. So, and this would be a, this a little more advanced lesson, but proximity to underlying, if it's in the money, see the yellow right there, how the market is trading inside the box in between the floor and the ceiling, that proximity tells me that there is 37 pips of premium. So, which I mean, on oil would be $370 on 10 contracts, right? And if it's out of the money, I actually just look at the risk, and that's my, because it's it's pure premium. There's no real value. And so 37 pips. So we're talking $7 or, you know, 74, 74 cents basically in premium. So could you do it? Yes, if it moves far enough. They're expecting that between now and 2.30, you're basically going to get a 74 pip move. If it only moves 74 pips up, then you'd make 37 on the one you bought, you'd lose 37 on the one you sold, you'd be break even. So it'd have to move a buck 40 for you to get a one to one on the straddle. And so how far do we think oil is gonna move tomorrow? Based on the option pricing, okay? And again, these aren't like pivot levels or deviations, they're, they're a lot more powerful. Um, it's not standard deviations, not pivots. You can use these, we have them in the futures contracts, they're all free. Um, so again, if you're a futures trader, forex trader, whatever, you can use it. But if we go and we look at oil, we go, what is the expected move on oil? It's a buck. So, so if it did move a dollar, okay, then that's if it moved a dollar in one direction, not 50 cents up and 50 cents, you know, like 50 cents up from the close and then it dropped a dollar from there, okay? So, for instance, like on the day I was showing you a second ago, like this, this day it moved a full deviation, but it moved up 50 cents and then it moved down, you know, 50 cents. This day, I mean, it dropped down a solid dollar. This day we only got a 50 cent move. Today, you know, we got a soft. Um, if it moved up a dollar, then like, if that's what's happened, then you would make about $30. If you took profit at a, like a $1 higher than where the market's at right now, you'd be risking 70 bucks to make 30 bucks. So that's what your expectation would be. So you don't necessarily want to just want to straddle it because it moves a lot, because the movement is built in. They're only building in a 70 cent move. We're building in a $1 move. So I have found that they actually do underprice it a bit. 
So, uh, but the, I mean, it's Black Scholes. Black Scholes is not a perfect model. So, uh, but that's how they price it. They're using, if you think of buying a $92 call on the CME, they're pricing it the same way. Um, I've compared uh, CME S&P 500 futures directly with Nadex spreads. They price out to be the same. The only difference is uh, the CME will price it in risk, like $4 per option times 50 options, whereas Nadex will price it with like $4 plus whatever the floor is. So like the quote is the risk plus the floor. And so the, the quote looks different, but the risk is the exact same. So they're very, very, very well priced. Uh, but you can't definitely can do straddles. You just want to find volatile times. So that's why I like trading these on news, because they can't really price in the news, the market maker. And Nadex isn't a market maker. They're an exchange. They're just in between the buyer and the seller. So the person on the other side would be a trader or maker, market maker doesn't know if you're getting in, getting out, taking profit, taking loss. They don't know what's going on. They just see an order. It's completely anonymous to them. And if they price it too high, then you could just do the inverse, right? Like if you guys going to move a dollar, you can just go in and go, I'll just, I'll just buy the upper one and sell the lower one. And sometimes I do that because it is too high. If um, they make it too small, then, you know, if you're going for one to one, you're probably going to lose. But maybe if you're going just for, you know, 0.5 to one, a 0.5 reward to one ratio, then that's where you get an edge. Uh, but the big time is fundamental shock. This is where you have an edge as a trader because you can hop in, and you can place a trade when there's really no way to know the total expected move um, in a market. I mean, they could use numbers like what we use, but those are averages and everything else. And so if they don't have accurately priced in the expected move, which a lot of times does happen, then that's where you get your edge on a straddle because it's fundamental shock. If the market moves a whole lot more, like the market didn't expect unemployment to come in at 7.3 tomorrow, that's going to make FX move a lot, okay? Uh, if it did, you know, they're expecting 7.0. So when that shock happens, that's what they can't price in. They can price in there's going to be a report, but they can't price in how off that report's going to be and therefore the fundamental shock if that report's off. And that's that fundamental shock is why you make money doing straddles. Now, if they overprice it, you know, like on the last um, FOMC interest rate announcement, the average move on the FOMC on the pound dollar for two hours after the pound dollar, two hours after the FOMC comes out is 70, like 73 pips, okay? I was able to go in and sell the thing for 70 pips. I was able to do the opposite trade and collect the premium. It popped up about 80, and it came back down about 40, and I made like $40 on the trade, you know, per contract, did like 20 contracts. So um, there's a lot of ways to do this. I, this webinar is not so much to make it where you master Nadex, but it is to give you an idea and what I would recommend you do is sort of your next steps is hop on over um, to, like I said, apexinvesting.com forward slash pub. And then the next step is I would go over and uh, sign up for a Nadex demo account. It's right under the trading tab on Nadex. And use the link that we give you in there. Morgan has a link that he can pass on. If you want to post your link in there, Morgan, um, use the link that we give you to sign up for that. We don't make anything personal. Like Apex doesn't make a dime off that. It just lets them know where they're coming from. Uh, we don't make anything on fees, like we can't. Regulatory wise, we don't make anything. If you make 100 trades or zero trades, Nadex doesn't pay me any money for that, okay? Uh, but I just, yeah, I want to help you understand sort of how it works. And then if you're wanting to get started on how to learn how to trade Nadex, check out this education section in here. And go to Nadex tutorials, and I have like beginning tutorials, like how does a platform work, how to get started, how the spreads work, how the binaries work. Um, I have all these uh, bonus webinars that we do on Monday nights where I go into advanced strategies like range bound, butterflies, condor, straddle, strangle, double binaries, ratios, all sorts of stuff like that. And then um, for the signals, we have scanner. We have uh, spread scanner, binary scanner, and we also have tutorials and stuff in here that you can take advantage of. So Gary, uh, he asks a great question I get all the time. With Nadex, it seems the bid-ask spread is so large. If I took a long identical trade in one account and a short identical trade in another, I would lose the bid ask spread, right? Um, one, at expiration, if you held expiration, which, you know, personally I don't recommend, but if you held expiration, you wouldn't lose the bid ask spread because it's where it settles. It's not like you have to pay the spread to exit because you don't. It's, it doesn't matter where it is. If the, if the market was up three ticks and the bid ask spread was six, it wouldn't matter if it expired where it expired. You're going to get out of that price. Two, yes, you are down the bid ask spread on any trade you get into. Uh, understand these are options. These, and the bid ask spread is not large. Um, for options. 
if you go in and you look at similar contracts uh, on you know futures, you're going to see the same thing. Okay, you're going to see that the bid spread really isn't big as you think it is. Uh, it may be bigger than what you're used to as a S&P E mini day trader. Um, you know, you know, you're used to one tick, but a lot of times it's not near as big. Like, let's go over. Let's look at say the S&P. You're used to a tick, which is we're twelve bucks and fifty cents. If I go over to the S&P right now, and I look at it, I'm going to get a twenty-six point two by twenty-six point six. Okay, well, remember Nadex ticks differently. Okay, it ticks in point one, so that's point five. So that's like having a two tick bid ask spread instead of a one tick bid ask spread on the S and P. Not really that big. Uh, down here, getting closer to at the money, thirty-three point four by thirty-three point eight. That's a four tick bid ask spread, which is forty bucks instead of uh, that's not even that. Four ticks would be yeah four dollars. And then we have to do five of them to equalize it, so it'll be twenty bucks. So it's twenty bucks instead of twelve fifty. So um, like on a future contract, your bid ask spread would be basically twelve fifty on the S and P E mini. So it's not as big as people make it out to be, um, and it is an option. So you should expect it to be larger. And then the third thing is honestly, I don't care. That sounds funny. Uh, you know, what do you mean you don't care about bid ask spread? I mean, let's look at this. If you go to euro dollar, you know, I mean, you can get like half pip and one pip wide bid ask. You're going to trade the euro dollar, drop the S&P off. And you go over here and you're like, that's, that's a five pit bid ass spread on the S&P. Okay. But uh, I have a six dollar risk. <laughs> I don't care. If I got to pay a couple dollars in bid ass spread to not have any stop loss, the euro dollar could go against me all it wanted to. And I'm not down more than six bucks. I don't have to deal with, oh, it's approaching my stop. Now I have to get out. Um, do I move my stop? Do I go the other direction? Do I get in again and put the risk up again? Do I sit on my hands and watch the market go back where I want it to? I don't care. It's, it's missing the forest through the trees. You're worrying about a couple dollars when you're risking 10 or 20 on the trade. And so if I can lower my risk and the worst thing I have to do is put up a couple bucks, that's fine. And that's not a Nadex thing. That's just that's an option thing. Um, I do know there are some more market makers coming on. And that will tighten bid-ask spreads as well, even further. But, you know, in my trading, my bid-ask spread has not been my downfall. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if, if your trading is if there's some one or two ticks, you know, maybe three ticks, but I mean, tick, if your difference in your ability to trade the S&P was a measure of a tick extra bid-ask spread on all your trades, and I mean, I've had 50 grand in commissions in one year on day trading the S&P E-minis. So I know what bid-ask spread adds up to, and I know what commissions and fees add up to. But... My net P&L at the end of the day was not about one or two ticks. So it was usually about my letting my losers run against me and closing my profit too soon. And this eliminates that problem. So there, right now, um, MRM, one market maker on Nadex, uh, market risk management, and there'll be a couple more coming on. So, and uh, they'll be covering everything. So AGS, Forex, I mean, they'll, they'll be across the board. So, uh, yeah, it's only getting better. I mean, the FCMs are coming on, which means more traders. More traders mean more volume. More volume means more market makers. Because market makers, I mean, they have to be able to balance out their risk. They're trying to buy at the bid and sell at the ask. Well, if there's nobody there to sell to, then they're basically taking you on directionally, and they don't want to do that. They just want to make bid-ask spread. So as volume goes up, as FCMs go up, then more market makers will come on, and they'll be, you know, in a year or two, maybe there'll be, like, you know, a dozen market makers. So they'll all be tripping over each other. And uh, one guy was like, oh, that's not how it works. I'm like, that, that's how it works. So, because you, if I'm long here and so, short here, and let's say there is a four tick wide bid ash spread that one market maker is making, but I just spilled a guy on the other side and I want to get rid of this thing because I bought from him at the bid. Yeah, I'll go in and I'll put it, I'll put a, uh, I'll go in and let somebody else buy it back from me. You know, sell it to them at 60, you know, 1.3615. So, because I want to get, I, I just want to make that $3. I don't care about making four. <laughs> I'm just trying to make two, three, four dollars at a time. One, two, three dollars at a time is fine with me if I'm a market maker. I just want to make the spread. I want to get out of the trade. I want to be delta neutral as quickly as I can. So, uh, all these strategies I'm teaching you, you can do the exact opposite. So, I'm not going to go into all the details on that because that'd be, I know I've already like flooded your brain with a lot of new information. But uh, these are breakout strategies. Range bound is the exact opposite. So instead of buying, I would sell. Instead of selling, I'd buy. Like I'd buy below the market, sell above the market. 
And uh, I love doing that, like pre-news reports. Uh, if you ever watched an FOMC interest rate announcement, you probably have noticed that between about maybe 11 and 2, 12 and 2, when 2 o'clock 2 o'clock Eastern time when the FOMC comes out, the market does nothing. Okay? And so I'll go in and I'll take advantage of that fact. If the market's not going to move, then instead of being the guy paying the premium, I'll be the guy collecting the premium. And uh, that's, a, that's an awesome strategy. I love doing that. Going in there and uh, what I'll do is like right over here, short summary for you. There's a whole video on butterflies and how to trade the news. There's tons of videos on how to trade the news. But um, I'll go in and try to find the ones at about you know this range, like $65 risk, which sounds funny. But one side is definitely going to win. One side may lose. And then um, yeah, we go here to euro dollar. And now I'm doing the opposite. So I would, like here's an example. I'd buy 35.75 at 69.50. I'd sell 36.75 at 15. If it doesn't go higher than 36.75 or go lower than 35.75 by three o'clock tomorrow, I'll collect 45 bucks. I have a $55 risk, a $45 profit. I have a, almost a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio on a range-bound trade. So I'll do those a lot too, especially the before news when the market goes flat. Um, I guess thin is all relative to you. You know, so I don't have a problem. I mean, I can put in 100 contracts and get filled. So, I mean, maybe if you have a $500,000 account and you're maxing that puppy out, you know, I mean, even with a five, like, I don't know what kind of risk management you use, but, I mean, I can get in and I can get out of trades and I have absolutely no issue. So, I mean, if, even if you have, you know, a $100,000 account and you're risking 2% a day max and you're dividing that by, I, like, my rule is, 2% a day or 5% a day divided by 6, so 333 bucks. How many contracts are you going to buy anyway? So unless you're going in, you're risking 5 or 10 or 20% of your account, or you have, you know, a high, high, high six-figure, seven-figure account, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. And if you do, well, great. Then just go ahead and do a euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar franc, dollar CAD, just put it across four different markets. But uh, I haven't found it to be thin. So I guess it just matters when you say thin, then as a relative term to account size, how many you're trying to put on at one time. And people ask me about the work, what about it when I get my account to 400 grand and I, I can't do 500 contracts? I'm like, well, let's, let's get to 400 grand first and then let's worry about 500 contracts. <laughs> so it's one of those concerns that people have before they have the account there to do it. And maybe you do. Maybe you totally have the money. So if you do, then it may just have to be one of several markets you use. But I also know guys that will go and they'll do 500 contracts because they're hedging. And there'll only be 100 on there. So they'll do 100, they'll do 100 more. When that refills, they'll do 100 more. When that refills, they'll do 100 more because they're buying the S&P. You know, they're going in, they're going long, you know, a lot of contracts. Like 100, like they're going long 100 S&P, you know, car. And then they're selling 500 spreads. So you can do that. Um, what I, on risk level percent, what I teach is don't risk more than 5% a day. Ideally, now it depends upon the probability of the trade. Probability has a lot to do with risk. So, what's your, what's your risk amount? What's your probability of making profit? What's your account size? On this type of strategy, I'll, I'll, I will actually put in as much as five or ten percent on a trade. So, because but I have the stats, I know how to trade them. When you're starting out, it should be really, really low. Uh, for directional trading, like we have a strategy called the Apex Elite Strategy where we have a live trade room. We trade every day. You can, by the way, if you're in the website, you can check that out. Free for four weeks, full, 100% access to everything. Um, and on that strategy, you know, like here's a you know, screenshot of like the euro dollar. So like buy on the E, moves up, sell on the E, moves down, sell on the E, moves down. It's pretty simple. Um, but uh, we're trading that strategy. What I teach is I teach 5% of your account, divide that number by six. That's the amount of trade per trade, which means I'd have to have a net six losses, which is pretty hard. Okay, I mean, you could be a bad trader, and it's still hard to get net, to net six like, if you follow rules. Um, because, I mean, if I had, you know, five, you know, three wins, three losses, I'm net zero. So I have to have net six losses down 5% before I'm out. So that's what I like. As far as directional trading, that's the rule I use. Um, why divide by six? The number one reason is because it's, it's hard to have six losses in a row. <laughs> so it lets me keep trading until ideally I'm up to 5%. So now I may be up 4%. I may take next, the next trade and make 3% on that trade. Well, then, great. That was a day where I made 7. But uh, 
basically, it, I had to figure out psychologically what was an amount I could risk in my account, what was an amount I could risk per trade, and keep taking the next trade over and over and over again. And I found that that number, if you can abide by it, psychologically works very, very well. And you don't change your system every 15 minutes. If you if you risk more than that, you're going to be freaking out about every trade, and you're you're going to get in your way. So, um, anyways, that was a lot. I hope you all got something from it. I hope you learned a few things. At least got a little bit of interest. And um, I look forward to seeing some of y'all. Like I said, we have trade rooms, we have webinars, everything, and tons of education. So if you want to learn more and you want it in bite-sized pieces versus you know fire hose method, um, hop over to the website and uh, check out the free education. And I'll hand it on back over uh, to Morgan. All right, great. Thanks, Daryl. We appreciate uh, appreciate you always being such a good uh, friend of the Trading Pub, always willing to share your education. And uh, for those of you that follow us on Twitter, I know we kind of update you to Daryl's weekly events on there as well. So um, 